Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today I'm doing a very late follow-up on something I promised to do a couple of weeks back, and that is a closer look at the uh, Unity Asset Store Mega Bundle Prototype Your Project uh, bundle that is going on right now. This one is available up on the Asset Store. It gives you a savings of up to 95%. It's organized kind of like a humble bundle into tiers. You buy the highest dollar value tier, you get all of the assets below it. And this one ends soon. And when I say soon, I mean like... Uh, day and a half. By the time I get this video up, you've got about a day and a half left. And uh, the reason why I didn't cover this one in a hurry, a lot of times when I when these bundles come out, I go into them right in depth right away. And this one's pretty straightforward, to be honest. So I kind of took a look at a few of the assets in here, and there wasn't really a lot of explanation required. But I decided I'm going to go hands-on, show you what this bundle's all about. So before it ends, you can decide if this one is right for you. And you see here, you got the $10 tier. At the $10 tier, you get the Easy State Bundle, the Medieval Farm Tools, and the Footstep System. Uh, this one's interesting basically way of creating footsteps in your game this one in all honesty it, it, there's all these visual programming tools built into unity now like bolt and and so on are now included that i didn't see a lot of reason for it so i'm not going to cover it it was it was more complex than i thought and i think it's kind of been obsoleted but this one straightforward asset pack and you may be wondering okay if i get 3d models and i want to use them in another editor or another game engine can i do so and the answer is mostly yes and i'll show you how to do that so all the stuff here you're seeing so, like this guy and this guy and this guy, uh, they can all be used in other engines, such as this guy as well. So we're going to move up to the next, the $15 tier. This one's just a straightforward sound effects pack. Now, you're going to find all of these things are set up and ready and pre-configured to work in Unity. And sometimes you've got things like these modular setups where you've got straight out prefabs that you're not going to get in other engines. But you are getting the raw data files. So you're getting the sound files here. You're getting the FBX files and the textures here. And then for this one, you're getting the FBX and textures and so on. So we'll look at this one in action in just a minute. So at this tier, you're getting for 15 bucks, you're getting all of the $10 tier. Plus you're getting the guns and explosion pack, the modular sci-fi weapons pack, the bullets, 2D projectile workspace, and then the PBR mechs pack. And I love me some mechs. So that's why we're going to start with that one. And then we move up to the final tier, 20 bucks. So for 20 bucks, you get basically everything here. And at this tier, that's when your savings jump to a total of 95%. Here you're getting the nature pack. This is a collection of assets for creating and pre prefabbing forests, basically. Easy character movement. This is a project-based thing for uh, doing a character movement for your game. Uh, the enemy vision. We'll see this one in action. Realistic snow, enviro, uh, sky, and weather. Spells pack. Uh, the Melee Warrior Animations Pack, Classic RPG GUI. This is a bunch of uh, PSD files included, so you can use these in whatever engine you wish, by the way. Uh, the Top Down Dungeons 2 Pack and the Philo Cable Simulator. And this is one that was most requested, so we'll take a look at that as well. We'll take a look at this one as well. Uh, this one here and these two. Uh, so we're going to take a look at a few of these things in action right now. So we're going to head on over to Unity as we go. All right, so here we go. Told you we were going to start with mechs. Here are some mechs. This one is about as straightforward as you get. Straightforward asset pack. Uh, there are walking animations on these mechs. Mechs aren't actually mechs. What they are is pieces. So you got like, torsos, weapons, arms, legs, and so on that you could then put together to create various different models. That is why it's called modular. So I'm going to stop the playback here and let's go ahead and go back to our default layout. That one looks good, but it isn't that functional. So here you can see the scene. Where are they? Okay, here we go. So all of our mechs in the scene are available over here. There you go. So if you go and you look at these, you're going to see, okay, well, there's a bunch of prefabs and pre-created. And we come in and we take a look at the stuff here. So you go, examples, we've got a number of prefabs. We can literally just drag and drop into the scene. That's how easy these things are to use inside of Unity. But if you want to use them outside, you can see here, say we've got models. All I do is go say, show an explorer, and then models, and then it's various different pieces. So we got all the various different torsos available. Uh, so two versions of torsos. Uh, we got different skins. You're going to notice these are all um, set up as Unity files. But if you go here, here are the source files. And what you're seeing is you're getting straight out texture. So you're getting the FBX files. You're getting the uh, PNG files for all the various different configurations of textures, etc. So if we want to grab that guy, for example, just go ahead, grab this guy. We're going to head on over to Trusty Blender. We'll do a file, import. It's an FBX file. So you're going to find the experience isn't as flawless as if you're just working in Unity, but obviously these are Unity assets. But if you want to use them somewhere else, there you see, you've got your asset available there. Um, if I pulled in legs, for example, they actually have animations attached. Here, let me go ahead. I'll, I'll bring a leg in. Uh, import, uh, FBX, uh, go up a directory, up a directory, torso. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so model. That was torso. So let's try chassis, chassis 2. Source, chassis two. 
All right, there we go. So we got the chassis. So you see how you use these together in a modular way? Well, the chassis also has animations attached to it. And as you see, they work perfectly fine uh, in Blender. We got a couple of different animations all built into the same timeline. Uh, but you can, you will still have to come in and apply the texture maps yourself. Should be pretty straightforward. All the textures are available here alongside as well. So as you can see, you can take the majority of these assets outside of Unity, but it's not a simple matter of, you know, dragging, dropping prefabs. So it's definitely going to be easier to use these assets inside of the Unity game engine. So that is the first one I wanted to showcase there. That is the modular mechs pack. Uh, we got a couple like that. So we've also got, so here I got the top down dungeon. Uh, let me just go ahead and grab the demo scene. Uh, I modified the demo scene, that one right here. All right, so here we go. We're not going to save. And this one is, again, a number of uh, pre-configured assets for creating um, dungeon scenes. So you can see all what you need to create a dungeon environment together. So this one, again, pretty straightforward. If you were making a modular dungeon type setup, you come here, you'll see, we go here, uh, prefabs, we've got things like columns, carpets, links, fencing, planks, ropes, walls, and so on. And then you use all of these things, like you bring all these walls together. So we've got various different walls that we can bring in, and you just basically start creating your modular level out of it. Pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, it's also set up for environmental effects, and what you may have noticed is uh, I've added a few uh, improvements. <laughs> so this is now a sci-fi uh, fantasy dungeon uh, combo. And we're going to go ahead, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at my slightly modified uh, demonstration of the project. So this is actually, you can see the uh, quality. So there we go. There's your top-down dungeon. We've got some of the modular weapons packs in here as well. Uh, we got, again, our mechs make a, another appearance because, like I said, I love mechs. But you get an idea of the kind of game levels that you can create uh, using the top-down dungeon pack, too. Uh, so that one's pretty straightforward. You'll also notice as we fly by, we got a couple of other assets. We've got landmines and some turrets here. Uh, that is from the other pack. I'm not going to load up the demo, but I will show you. Uh, so modular uh, sci-fi weapons here. So you can see here, we got a number of prefabs. So we've got things like mines, missiles, modular weapons, turrets, and so on. So if you need a turret, boom, you can bring turrets into your game. Like so. And the turrets are made out of modular different bits. So if you need missiles, we can drop some missiles in, like so. Various different missiles available, like so. And then, of course, we've got things like um, guns, too, so weapons. So various different guns that you could mount on. Now, funny enough, this pack and this pack should play pretty well together. Because if you want to bring in weapons, like so, you can mix, ooh. You can mix and match onto your mechs and start using these together, if you so wished. So they're definitely, the modular weapons pack and the mech pack are two packs that will definitely work well together um, for sure. And this one, again, the FBX files are available. So if you were working with the Godot engine or Unreal or whatever, if you want to go through the effort of bringing these things out, uh, you could do so. And I'm going to show you in a minute a document on how to do that. Now, the final one that was probably one of the more interesting things in this pack is the cables pack. And this one is if you're trying to create like Rube Goldberg style machines, uh, it could be fun for you. I think that was Indie Mark. Nope. Oh, no, I got another one to show you. Okay, so we got Indie Mark here as well. Uh, this is the um, enemy vision system. So let me just go ahead and show you the demo scene. This one is pretty straightforward. Uh, it, it is an implementation. It's a number of game scripts, etc., for creating uh, 2D style games. Uh, where is my level? Here we go. So here you've got a 2D style platformer, you've got patrols going on here. Your characters in, they've got things like a script for enemy controls, and they've got, uh, you know, patrol states and so on. And then they got vision scripts attached. And then what you see here is basically this is um, a conical vision system uh, so that you, you can implement enemies. So you see here we've got this police officer here looking for us. Let me zoom out and see. Why are you not zoomed right? Anyway, so if I go over here, you're going to notice, oh, Oh, we're detected. We're semi-detected. Now he's going to go on patrol. And now when you get into the, the one range, we are definitely literally protected. So you can see that's basically the idea behind this one. Uh, there's also a 3D version of it. Uh, very similar concept. But of course, uh, we are now in three dimensions. So you can see here. Oop. Oop. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on. Play. Play. All right, so you see there, they've got their vision, so they're on patrol, they're looking for, you can see where their vision is obscured. And then we go here, they're in alert state, 
and then they're in a, oh, I found you state. So that's kind of the idea behind it. It's a way of, um, you know, this is very common in just about any type of game you're gonna create where you need to be able to search for and track down characters. So you see there, these guys are just in patrol, but these guys are in straight out follow mode. Uh, implemented as a pretty simple set of scripts you can attach to your game. Uh, so you can see in the 3D mode, we'll look at one of the police officers here. It's got vision script attached and a control script for, you know, patrol states. It can switch into alert, chasing, and so on. And that is all controlled by the enemy vision system. And you've got control over, so you see they've got a 45 degree of view of vision. They've got a range of vision and so on. Pretty straightforward, simple one on the whole. But if you need to add vision elements to your game, uh, that is what that is all about. And then finally, we got Philo Cables. And this one is uh, kind of neat. It's for creating like Rube Goldberg style machines out of cables and pulleys. And here's one of the demos. Weird thing is their demos don't really show much which is strange. So it, it's dynamically creating the cabling for you. Uh, so I'll go out of the demo here and I'll grab something that's attached to one of these cables. So let's go here back to scene view. And all right. So you see if I grab this guy right here and move it, you see it's dynamically handling the cabling. So what I found is their demo doesn't do a whole lot. So I modified one, the simplest one to kind of show you what this guy can do. Ah, there we go. So here you can see, again, simple pulley system. You can use this thing. It will create the cables for you. Uh, I believe there are um, actually tools for doing so. Uh, but again, if I grab this guy and move it around, you'll see, see the cables moving and stretching and everything else. But what I did is I attached a very simple script to this guy that just applies some physics when I hit the space bar. So you can see how these will actually perform in a dynamic environment. So if you're creating these winch and pulley kind of setups, so here is our setting. So you see, since I moved it off axis, now we've got gravity kind of kicking and doing its thing. But now if I'm gonna hit space bar, so see how the gears all kind of work together? That is what this thing is about. And there I'm actually spooling around. And now I'm unspooling. And when you see it actually in action, it gets so much cooler. Now I don't know how many spools around that thing there are. So we may not actually finish this. I'm not sure where it's going to end up, but you get an idea of what this system is all about. So if this is the kind of thing you need to add to your game, this makes it really kind of uh, simple to work with. Um, yeah. So that is that you can see here, you've got uh, cable solvers to get cables. You've got all the various different tools for handling the different attachment points. Uh, and then you've got things like pulleys in your system. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the Philo cable management system. And again, when you see it in action, it's, uh, it's pretty cool what it does. And it's, again, uh, very specific, but if you need to add like kind of these, again, Rube Goldberg-y kind of machines, uh, you can do so. By the way, this will work in 2D and in 3D if you wish. And that is it. That is the bundle. Uh, hopefully you found that useful again and get about a day and a half left before this one ends. Um, the best stuff is as always in the bottom. So the dungeon we looked at here, actually it's not the best stuff is in the bottom because that one's the, the ones that we looked at today, this one, this one, and this one, they're all in the bottom. Uh, but the mechs and the modular weapons are actually in the middle pack. And then we got a number of gun sounds as well available there. And then the first tier is kind of crap. Uh, so if you saw what you like here, basically any single one of these, for example, the modular mechs alone are 25 bucks. Uh, the modular weapons, 20 bucks. Uh, the vision system, 15 bucks. So you're pretty much any one of these assets more or less pays for the entire bundle. And as you saw, you can pull these things out and use them uh, in other engines, in, in other environments. Just do be aware, uh, you're going to have to do some extra work. It's not a matter of simply drag and drop and prefabs. And you're getting the raw materials. You may have to recreate the texture maps. You may not, depends on how the FBX was set up. Uh, in some cases, it's literally just audio files, so they work just fine. But yes, you can use a number of these assets outside of Unity. And if you're interested in learning how, I actually did a video or, and uh, a text tutorial on how to export from Unity to other game engines. It shows another method of bringing things kind of in a more complete state, how you can go about and find these things, how you can use uh, things like the extractor. And of course I showed you in this video how to basically just go ahead and find the raw FBX files. So I will link this um, down below if you wanna go and check that out. But just word of warning, there is just one day left. By the way, if you do use my link, I get a small commission and thank you very much for doing so. So that is it. That is the uh, Unity Asset Store Mega Bundles prototype your project. Uh, again, I'm pretty late on showing you this, but at least I'm showing you before it expires. So if you're on the fence about picking up this bundle, hopefully I helped you out and decide. Now we may have been a little bit mech heavy in our coverage because hey, I love me some mechs. So let me know what you think, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.